Oliver Reginald Tambor was a music composer, teacher, devout Christian, and supreme strategist who convinced the world to join the chorus of the ANC in condemning apartheid. Often described as the quiet, thoughtful academic of the revolution, Tambor was a man of steely resolve who would lead his people to freedom. Originally from Ponderland, Tambor's life as an educator was short-lived as he studied law, believing this would better equip him for the liberation struggle. In the early 50s, Oliver Tambor and Nelson Mandela formed the first black legal practice in Johannesburg. Although polar opposites in many ways, the two men complemented each other. Unlike the gregarious Mandela, Tambor was a meticulous behind-the-scenes man. But together, they made a formidable team that shaped the future of the African National Congress. In the brutal era of the 1960s, with most of the leadership imprisoned, the ANC secretly ferried Tambor out of the country to shoulder the daunting task of garnering international support for the movement. Going door to door and country to country, the ANC president developed an enormously powerful anti-apartheid movement that spread across the globe. Although he was often away from his family, Tambo's wife, Adelaide, was credited with being a profound guiding force in his life. Together with Adelaide, he also kept a close eye on events unfolding inside the country. Outraged by the government's brutality and declaration of a state of emergency in 1985, the usually even-tempered Tambo made a bold call on Radio Freedom for activists to make the country ungovernable. And a government which must kill people every day to stay in power is a government that is losing control. However, he was essentially a man of dialogue. When he got word of Mandela's secret talks with the apartheid government in the late 1980s, he supported the path of long-awaited negotiations. After 30 years in exile and having left the country out the back door, Tambo finally, in 1990, came home through the front door of the airport that is now named after him. Together with his compatriots, Walter Sisulu and Governor Mbeki, these political giants displayed rare leadership and modestly stepped away from center stage. And those selfless actions allowed Tambo's former law partner, Nelson Mandela, to take the reins. Although he dedicated his life to the concept of universal suffrage, Oliver Tambo died before he was able to vote. Like Moses, he never reached the promised land.